All right, everybody, welcome back. We're here with Inbred Jed. We're gonna show you today how to save a bunch of money making chainsaw chain. So we're in the little corner of our shop right here. This is where all the magic happens. This is where we make our chain. So we're just gonna go through what you need to make your own chain. Um, I'll show you how Jed does it. And then at the end, we'll talk about the price difference because it's a pretty substantial price difference from you know, making your own loops of chain by buying it in the spool um, versus just buying individual loops. So you'll see it's it's super easy to do. You can do it and it'll save you a bunch of money. So we'll just we'll just get into it. Let's see how Jed makes up our loops of chains. All right. So here we go. This is where this is the lab right here. So what are we doing, Jed? I'm only doing what I've been shown to do, which seems to make a lot of sense to me is and that's to pound a nail in the right spot on your bench so that you'll have the correct driver count because I'm bad at math. Jordan taught me to count by twos, Jordan Blonsky, but it's it's really hard to count 105 drivers. This is just for a 32 inch bar, which is what we use on a lot of our 70 cc saws. And this is kind of our most popular chain length. We've got like two of them right now. So we're gonna get a few more going. And the the best thing, an ideal thing is to have something marked out so you know where 105 is. And then I like these Milwaukee Sharpies. Like these things are, they mark, you know, it, th this stuff's oily from the factory. So these will actually show up and you'll be able to see which is the last driver that you need. Okay. And so how do you figure out how many drivers you need? Yeah. So, and maybe we should go through the terminology just so everybody yeah. knows. So, you want to just point out the parts of the chain just so everybody knows exactly the chain. Yeah. what we're dealing with here. You've got the drivers right here. These are the links or tie straps. And these are the teeth or the chisels. Okay. What's that little 75 on there? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to find out in this video. <laughs> This is uh, not important. That's 75. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're running 75. That means it's three quarters of 100. <laughs> so, okay, so so that makes sense. So, so how, and how, how do you figure out how many drive links that you need in a loop of chain? So we've got a 32 inch chain. Yeah. How did you, how many drive links is that? And how did you figure out how many that is? Usually they write it out for us. So this is a still guide bar and they're pretty good about the way they engrave these things. Drivers, 91. So that's a 28 inch guide bar and it's right there. It's got the little pictures. Okay. Troglodytes. So it's right on the bar. So that tells you, so that's 91 for a 28 inch bar. This is a 32 inch bar. So this is 105 drive links. Yeah. And you can see we've got various nails incrementally. So like if we were to put the, the chain on here and then pull it taut. Yeah. Now we know that that's 91 drive links so that's a 28 inch chain because it rides right on the edge of you know anything to mark you know that driver so it's right on the edge of that wood rather than counting every drive link every single time so some people so we do it this way we used to <laughs> it, it was written on here at one point with sharpie but it wore off over time so just because it's like a 32 inch still bar doesn't mean that it's a third that the drive counts are the same you want to look at the bar and like Jed, what, what kind of bar do you have on your 395? I've got a still bar, but you're gonna need an extra driver for that one. So it's 114 for still, and I, I'm 90% sure it's like 115 for a Husky with a little adapter in there. Okay, yeah, so, so make sure you look at the bar and then remember if you're not using the bar, how it was sold. So yeah, he's got a still bar and a Husky saw, so you have to, and like I, I put this bar on the 880 and um, that's a 3 8 tip, so that's not, you know, this is a 36 inch bar. Originally, this is a 404 bar. I changed the tip to 3 8 so now it's a 3 8 chain. And this, you know, it coincides not at all with the, the number on the side of the bar. I can't remember how many drive links are on there, but it's it's totally different. So, so something to think about, the, the bar is it will probably be accurate, but if you're doing something weird, customizing it or anything, you might have to just count with the drive links. And sometimes you might make a loop and it doesn't quite, fit on there you know if you do your tensioner all the way and it's still loose you need fewer drivers if you can't get it on you you know you might need um more drivers so so just keep that in mind the the husky and the still often are different in regards to how many drivers it'll be off by one or two 
Yeah, don't get stuck trying to flex the guide bar with 114 drivers trying to get it on because both Chris and I failed at that one. So, <laughs> not that maybe it can yeah. be done. Maybe you'll be the guy. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, that's something to keep in mind. Yeah. Okay, so now we've got our, we know how many drive links we need. We need 105 drive links. So we've got it out of the, the spool. Yeah. It was on a spindle right there. Is that 105? Where did I mark that? Is that on the 91? Yeah. We gotta go over to. Oh, sorry. Yeah. No, it's I right. it Where'd she go? 105. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so step two, once you know, once you know where you are, and here I've messed up about a million chains because I'll say, well, that's the last driver that I need. So I know that this is the tie strap that'll have to pop out but I don't know how I've messed that up so many times. So if you do have a good marker and you just mark the color of the one that you want to nuke, you can get rid of it and you won't make any mistakes. So these are dyes available from like organ cutting systems or, or still, I'm sure. I don't even know. I think you can get them um, from Bailey's online. We okay. order our stuff from Madsen's, which is a local shop. And I think you can get them on Amazon too. Um, so yeah, it's really be pretty easy to I, find. Yeah, I really like this one you got, Jake, from Oregon, because yeah, I think I bought that on Amazon, and that's pretty cool because it just seems to be ideal for. I'm and, not sure what the difference is. Yeah, and you got different slots for different. Yeah, you know, types of chain. Three A's, three twenty five. This one has quarter pitch and uh, four oh four. Yeah, we're running three eighths, so yeah. We just punt, just put it over the three eight spot, and then there's yep. that hollow pocket underneath the rivet. Right, it's recess on the bottom, and this is where an old man will do well to get some bifogals. But I'm gonna try to be super brave. You just line up two different ways. You know, 90 degrees from where you are is gonna put you right in the center, and then just a quick not super forceful but a quick punch usually does just fine to pop the rivet right out this is a pretty new uh what do you call it a punch yeah yeah and you can buy replacement tips too if they if they wear out right yeah it's good to have those on the hand because guys will miss <laughs> and then, um and so that pops it out every once in a while there's a little metal ring that'll remain up here. You want to get that off because when they bunch up, they don't punch through right. So that's our 105 right there. All right. Yeah, and really important, you get that punch right in the middle of the, I've gummed up a bunch of drivers, like not quite lining it up all the way. Oh yeah, me too. Yeah, the, when the drivers bend, it's maddening. Cause you think, you think you've made up your chain right and then you put it in the bar groove and it hangs up and yeah, nice. but when you buy a spool too, it's gonna come with all. It's gonna come with a bunch of these. Yeah, you know these loose <laughs> drivers right here. The loose uh, links. Yeah, the rivets. Everybody always has an extra ten million of these. It's like yeah, they give you way too many. Yeah, they give you a lot. Yeah. They're very generous with these. So, yeah. so if you mess up a tooth, you can just you know splice uh, another one of these on there, and we'll show you how to do that. With, with um, that, yeah, it's a. You definitely want to get the get it lined up right. Yeah, the only mistake you can make here is getting these upside down. So the little riders, I think that's what they're called, these little uh, feet on the bottom, that's what rides on top of the uh, bar rails. You just wanna make sure that's not upside down. I've seen guys get them upside down and it doesn't seem to hoop the sprockets or anything too much, so that's good. Yeah, so if the thing is, I'm a little bit fumbly. Oh, that's all good. I'm trying to get. Yeah, and I just pinch it. Capture that. Oh so yeah. You see. That's another thing. Like a lot of times when you put it in here yeah, to it's spin. Like hard for me to see. Oh. Sorry, I'm just no. trying to like show what you're doing, but yeah, I'm trying to get the right angle. Yeah. So so you see how it it the the rivets punched in, and then that little receiver piece went on the other end. So now you got the two bits of metal sticking out. Right. And we've got to flatten those so that that becomes a permanent link. Yeah. And some people, namely Chris Marigulia, 
is very, very good at doing this. I saw him do a ton of them at Davy. He went super fast and just like flatten this out. Uh, and Jake, thank you for getting this. I, I, you're supposed to have this and we never did. Mm -hmm. um, just a little bit of oil is gonna help you spin these up. Chris would just nail these. He'd, so he'd just like, I don't even know what he did. He would just put light pressure here, spin on the spinner, and start mushrooming over the rivets. I mess it up most of the times that I try it. Here's the maddening part of joining up chain is, or jointing chain, I think. You need a, you need sufficient, well, you need to close the tolerance here enough so that it's not too wobbly right there. Okay. Yeah, so you can see the top one is a little more closed than the bottom one. Yeah, this one's not even begun the mushrooming yeah. process of the rivet. So, and that one I'm just starting in on. Yeah, I saw Big Phil did uh, broke a chain just on the bed of his truck. Yeah. And he knew exactly how many... Like if I were a smarter man, I'd just count when I did that part, <laughs> and then when it does, when it's right, replicate it. But he knew exactly like how many cranks to do on that part and how many spins to do, wow. and it like came out beautifully. But it doesn't have to be perfect; it just has to be strong enough to hold the chain. But you don't want to get it too tight because then they'll bind up like crazy, and then you won't be able to run it through your guide bar. But even if it's just a little bound up, it, it a lot of times mine are too tight, and then they loosen up once I, as soon as I start running it. Yeah. That's See, that's, but, that's an experienced timber cutter for you. Cause he's probably just done so many the way yeah, he likes it. Right. Yeah. So, okay, you want to crank the other one? Yeah, I'm going to give this one a little bit of a spin. And I should probably put oil on there. I don't yeah, know. So see, this one is just shoving that rivet. And then right. this thing spins it just to make it flat and mushroom-like. And I don't know, if somebody knows, chime in to Jake's uh, YouTube thing because... I don't know whether for, like generating heat with this is important or not. I mean, obviously it is, right? You're trying to mushroom over the steel. So yeah. I would think that's better, but it's really easy to get carried away and get too aggressive. <laughs> yeah, and it's easy to overthink it, but it's really pretty simple. Like there are like 20 of us that do this, Yeah, you know, and you only have to show somebody like once and then they, they kind of get it. You might mess up a driver or two, but just break out another link and You'll figure it out. It won't take that well, long. Well, some of us get really frustrated because we get it. We spin it too tight. Now you're starting all over again. Yeah. Popping it out, redoing it. It's, it can be maddening. I've seen people mess yeah, up. But, yeah, but it's not, even if you mess it up, though, it's not going to cost you that much. It's going to cost you a drive. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's not like you no. can throw the chain away. It costs you time. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So, so it looks like so. that's probably... Pretty good. Yeah, if you get it, if you get them too loose, then the chain will come apart. And if it does, you can just well, that's a safety hazard. It shouldn't. But if it does come apart when you're running it, you just just put just do what we just did. Do it again. Do it a little tighter. And right. if you get it too tight, it might kink up pretty bad. But well, and you know, for me, that's not mushroomed over sufficiently. And I don't know that it mat. I don't know that this extra tolerance here matters very much. I'm sure to some extent it does. But I pound these down with a ball peen hammer. Yeah. I'm kind of the Barney Fife of tree work. You know, I make a big deal out of everything that's not necessarily that big of a deal. So I pound these over and try to get them nice and smooth. Again, you can, you know, malform them to the extent that it pinches again and does the same thing that over tightening here does. So. Okay. So are you going to bang that? Yeah. Yeah. I'll bang away on the vice cool. here. If uh, I can just get this. Oh, my just camera stuff. Sorry. Right. Oh, that's all right. I'll put your coffee here, man. Uh, yeah, I grab this a couple times. This way, you're not having to try to support this at the same height that uh, the chain's at. And I just take a real tight grip, start pounding the rivet, you know, rounding over the mushroom a little bit here maybe jump over to the other one and if you get too carried away with your bangs it's gonna pinch and you'll be upset i've seen guys like sit there trying to uh oh see look what i did let's see if it works 
Yeah, and I'm gonna quit while I'm ahead. Cause you can see that moves fully, what do you call it? How many degrees? However many degrees that is. And that one too. And that's kind of good. If, if you wanna get crazy, you can put these on the grinder. And I mean, it's not race chain, but you can just bump off, you know, potentially if that's not smooth out enough, that'll catch in the kerf. You don't want that. It's shaving wood and it's creating more parasitic drag than you wanna deal with slowing your motor down. So just bump off the edges or at least the leading edges, like the chisels are going this way, right? So bump off the front, the leading edges of those rivets with the grinder. Smooth yeah. as silk, yeah. And I mean, these are gonna gunk up with wood and be smooth, but you think about those race chain guys, man. They'll yeah. pay a thousand bucks per chain to have guys like, I guess, file these down, polish them down. <laughs> Just this is crazy. Yeah, so. Yeah. That's our redneck you, version. You, you probably don't need that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna take a leak real quick, I'll be right back. Okay. okay, so the economics of this stuff. How much money are you gonna save making your own chain rather than buying individual loops? Well, you're gonna need to invest a little bit into the hardware, so you can get these, um, we, we shop at a local store called Madsen's in Centralia, but you can get these on Amazon too. You've got your, your chain punch and your rivet spinner. I think you're gonna spend about 60 bucks a piece. It's gonna be like 120 bucks for the hardware. And then you're gonna need the spool of chain and that's gonna cost you around $300. I called Madsen's and asked for the price a few months ago. So the prices might be a little bit dated, but for the most part, it should be pretty accurate. So you're gonna pay $300 for a spool of chain and out of that, you're going to get 15 32 inch loops of chain. You'll, you'll of course get more if you run a shorter guide bar, but for consistency, we'll just stick with 32 for this video. So you're gonna get 15 chains for $300. So it's gonna be about $20 a chain. I looked it up on Amazon for just one loop of chain of the same kind, you know, 050 skip tooth chain, and it was uh, the same same manufacturer Oregon it was $33 so $33 for one loop or you do it this way it's $20 for a loop so if you're busting out the chainsaw you know once a year maybe this wouldn't make sense but it very quickly pays for itself I mean even buying this stuff at the same time it's still cheaper than buying it in loops so you'll make your money back off of one loop so if you're in any capacity doing this professionally be it landscaping construction you know you're clearing lots or you're a tree guy you know you're it's 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 way cheaper if you do it this way so i punched in into the calculator and it said it was like 39 percent cheaper so i'll probably call this video half price chain so that you're more likely to click it but it's more like 39 <laughs> percent cheaper chain <laughs> you know but but if i if i write 39 percent cheaper nobody's gonna watch that but they're gonna watch 50 percent cheaper so it's 39 percent cheaper which is a lot of money especially if you're running you know lots of crews you're cutting a lot of wood so get this stuff and make your own chain you're gonna save a ton of money and it's really easy and you know when you're doing the the all this riveting stuff it might take you a little while to get a good feel for it but you know like i said even if you mess up a driver you can just break off one more link and just you know splice that on and it's really it's really not that difficult and it's going to pay for itself really fast so that's all you need to know you need the spool chain punch riveter and that's it and now you can make your own chain for 39 percent cheaper so so yeah so hopefully you like that thanks for your help jed oh yeah man. you know there's a thousand tree service guys out there who are just like not quite clicking the you know put in your shopping cart thing yet and they'll see your video and be like yeah that's worth it <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's just, it, it's way cheaper. Yeah. And you really only have to, so, you know, it, it pays for itself in one spool, even buying, even buying the, the hardware, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I can't believe there's guys out there that just, they rock their chains. Just like, go to the dealer, get a new chain, man. Right. <laughs> so, but you could do it this way. You could rock your chain and make your own chain. Yeah. And never sharpen it and yeah. still save money. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead do it that way. Yeah. So, Jed grinds all of our chains. We, we hang up our dull ones there, and then he puts the sharp ones there, and his guys help him with that. So, yeah. it's really it's really efficient. So, we'll make them here. 
we hang them up when they're dull. Jed gets them crazy sharp with this thing. And yeah, that's how we handle our chain. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed that. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And thanks again, Jed. Oh man, yeah.